So hello again. Last video we went over a introduction to flip-flops and now we're actually going to work out a problem and we're going to introduce the D flip-flop. Now the D flip-flop is going to be the easiest to use and the one where we really don't have to do that much additional work as other flip-flops such as the JK flip-flop which has a, di a more difficult truth table. So here the the symbol for a D flip-flop is very similar to the JK flip-flop and all flip-flops. It's just going to be a square and it'll work as memory. So the output Q will always be state dependent. That means that whichever state Q was in before will affect the next state it is in. So here I have the truth table for the D flip-flop and as you can see it's very simple and straightforward. If the D is zero, then q plus will become 0, and if the d is 1, the q plus will become 1. This basically means that we will have to do no changes to the q plus in order to integrate it with the d flip-flop. We are basically going to use the function q plus and input it into the d flip-flop. There is no additional change necessary. So I thought it would be a good example to start explaining how we can actually connect these to the circuits we were doing in previous videos. So let's start off with this example. So we'll see that for this example, we're going to need two D flip-flops. This is exemplified because we have four states. So in order to have four states, you're going to need two bits that label each state. You're basically labeling each state in binary. So these states can be anything and you know, they can translate into the analog world, but, you know, we always want to do these computations in binary so that we can actually create digital systems that will have the desired output. So we have A and B, which are our state labels, and then we have X. So X is new. I called it X because it's basically a variable in the sense that it could be a switch or it could be a clock, but it's basically going to change. And the value of x will determine what happens to the state, whether it changes or it stays the same. So for this example, as you can see, when x is zero, the state will stay the same. Let's look at this in more detail by paying attention to row one. In row one, the state begins as zero, zero, and then the value of x is 0. So the following state, q1 and q2, will be 0, 0. So what are q1 and q2? These are basically going to be the outputs of our D flip-flops. So they're going to tell us what the state that follows the value of x will be. So it's basically what value will be stored in these D flip-flops if x remains 0. I like to also refer to them as A plus and B plus because they are basically telling us what the next state will be. And once that state is reached, the new value of A and B will be what was A plus B plus in the previous kind of instant. So I wanted to go over the example. This will become much easier to understand. I know it's a little bit confusing right now, but it'll be much easier to understand once we get to state diagrams. State diagrams are what allow us to create these tables. If we have a certain system of, say, a security system or a vending machine, then we're going to have to simplify that system into a system of binary numbers. So we are going to have to define states, which will be our A's and B's, and we're going to have to define what will happen next and what will cause that change, which will be our variable x. So once we have a visual way to represent it, it's going to make a lot more sense. But I really wanted to focus on how to integrate the D flip-flops into our circuits, which we were already covering in previous videos. Now that we have those tools, we are able to see how memory will really help us create more complex systems than a simple combination of gates. Here we have the truth table for the D flip-flop. As you can see, the D flip-flop will always follow the input of D, and it will store that value. So the D flip-flop is the easiest to use, 
which is why I definitely recommend it. However, the other ones of course have their own advantages where they may simplify the actual circuit that goes into the input, but for now, let's look at D. It'll be the easiest to understand, and once we do have D, the D flip-flop understood, we can go on to more complex flip-flops. So this is what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to do a K-map with Q1 and Q2. So basically, every bit that you need to define the states, so in this case we need two bits, we're going to need two D flip-flops. And, you know, you can go as many states as you want, just keep in mind that you're going to have to do that many K-maps. So let's start with Q1. As you can see, we're going to consider X as a variable, just like we were doing before. So it's going to be a three variable K-map with A, B, and X. And if you would like to review how to do K-maps, I go over it in a lot of detail in previous videos. Always remember that the 3 and 2 are flipped. So whenever you fill out your K-map, always be careful of that. I know it takes a little while to get used to, because you just want to keep on filling in the order that it is given. But it's always important to start with these two rows and then skip to the last and then go back. So now we're going to go row by row and fill this out. So see how important it is to skip that row of this? If we did it the wrong way, it would drastically change our circuit. So it's something to be very, very careful with. So now that we have our ones, I would like to verify this by counting the number of ones that are on the table, just because it's very easy to kind of get lost between the zeros and ones, but we have four ones on the table and on the K-map, so we're good. And now we're going to group the ones. The first group that we can make is right down here. It's going to be the bottom group. And then we can make a group with these two ones, which are next to each other. And always remember, you cannot go diagonally for K-maps. So you cannot group these two together. You, This one will sadly have to be a group of its own. So now that we have our terms and our groups, we can start creating our terms and finalizing our function for Q1, also known as D1, the first flip-flop. So let's start with term 1. That is going to be our longest term. We're going to look at what does not change. In this case, it's all the variables, so it's going to be a naught bx. So we're basically doing the same as we would for any other counter, for any other k-map. We're going to look at term 2, and we're going to see that the only thing that changes is b, so we're going to get rid of b in our term, and we're going to see that a stays at 1. So that's going to be a, and x stays at x0, so that's going to be x0. And finally, we're going to go to our last term down here, term 3, and we're going to see that x changes, so it's just going to be a combination of a and b. In this case, it's going to be a, b0. So now we know that the function for q1 is equal for the function of d1, which is equal to a b naught or a x naught or a naught b x and that it for the most part is what you're going to be doing for each flip flop. Now we're going to look at q2 or b plus q2. We're going to do the same exact thing that we did for q1 except using the other function. Let me set this up. Now that I have the k map built. Uh, again, paying attention to these two variables, which are flip, so make sure you don't get that wrong. I'm going to start looking for groups, so our first group is pretty easy, it's right here. Again, we can't go diagonal, so the only option we have here to group those two ones is across the table. So remember that you can go across the table because it's basically like switching the order of an AND gate. It does not matter. It's like when you multiply two numbers, the order won't matter. That is exemplified by going through the table, across the table. So here we are going to group the top one with the bottom one because they are sort of connected in the sense that both of them are on opposite ends of the table. Now we're going to start looking at the terms. So we're going to 
say that term one is going to be that weird looking group that goes across the table. So now we know, we look at what changes and what stays the same. We can see that A changes. So we are going to leave that out and we are going to say that term one is going to be equal to B naught X. And now we're going to look at the second term. And we see that the only term that changes is A again. So we're going to drop that again and we're gonna have the term bx naught. So now for our function q2, which in this case is equal to the function of d2, this will equal b naught x or bx naught. If you are paying attention to the previous videos, you should be able to see that this is the same as an x or gate. So d2 will actually equal bx or x. So this is really significant because something that would take three gates, as you can see here, it would be an AND gate, an OR gate, and an AND gate. Instead of having all of those gates, we're combining everything into one gate. You know, it's, it's something to definitely keep in mind, especially once you get to bigger circuits and things where the number of gates really have to be the, as minimal as possible. So this is an example where you can visualize what I was mentioning earlier, that a k-map will not help you determine if there is an x or gate that is possible. As you can see, we used the k-map properly and we still ended up with two terms. And there, from there, we really have to be able to identify it so that we can end up with a minimal circuit for that function. So now because these are d flip-flops, what we're going to do is basically create the circuit such that these two functions are connecting to the D flip-flops as the inputs. So if you review my previous videos on how to create circuits, you can be better equipped for this, but it's basically just that. So I'm going to draw the circuit really quickly. So here, as you can see, we have the circuit that connects to the 2D flip-flops. So I named the first flip-flop D1, just like I did for the variable for the function, and the second one D2. So, as you can see, this will basically result in what the next state will be. If we were to connect two LEDs, these kind of represent LEDs, to the circuit, we can see what state is being stored within those D flip-flops. So as you can see, Q1 will be the representative of A, so this is going to be the most significant bit, and this will be the least significant bit. I definitely recommend that you pay attention to this because it'll help you understand how the states will work once X begins to vary. What we basically did with this circuit was a counter. We were basically saying that once x is 1, the state of a and b will change to a different state. There is one last thing that we have to do to the circuit for it to be complete. In order to do so, I'll move some variables around. So just one second. Okay, so I moved the variables around because basically what we're saying is that the output will become the input later on. So what we need to do is connect the output, the output of these D flip-flops back into our A's and B's. Because what is the output is going to be the next state of A and B. So basically when the output changes, A and B has to change as well. It is going to be the same value. And as I mentioned in the table, each flip-flop will represent and store the value of each bit that will label the state that we want and that we are in. That's basically what is different for D flip-flops. All we're going to do is basically connect the output to the input and create a function of those inputs and along with the switch variable so that we can create a desired output of values stored. The LEDs can also be connected to it so that we can see and have an actual output that is tangible and, you know, 
So that is mostly how to do a D flip-flop circuit. Later on, we're going to go over more flip-flops, and we're also going to go over state diagrams, which can help us grab this kind of word problem and simplify it down into a system that works in binary. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Thank you.